This morning's scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. Once again, that is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. Let's stand for the reading of God's Holy Word. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that we, that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just ask you to guide your hands upon us this morning as we receive the word and the message that you have for the people. Lord, help us to truly embrace it and to accept it, not to take from it or add to it. And God, we just also ask you to just fill your presence in this place this morning. And Lord, I ask you also to touch my mind and my mouth, that everything that proceeds from my lips be the truth. It's in your precious Son's name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. About a month and a half ago, I attended a required clergy meeting for the district. And in this meeting, we were focusing on the issue of the mission. The mission of the church, you know, the mission of companies, things of that nature. And having a mission statement. And having, you know, a, a covenant that people would follow and you know exactly where you were going. What was the priority? Well, in the midst of this meeting, we were watching this video. It was about an organization that works with all sorts of different companies, uh, people famous and non-famous all over the United States about their mission statements and the focus on the mission of their company, etc. And one of, the, one, of the, one of their areas in the United States... At one time, they had invited a group of really big, buff, rough and tough, courageous NFL stars to come to their organization. And it was out in a wooded area. And they brought them there to work on, you know, the issue of keeping the mission, accomplishing the mission. And so what they decided to do was to do an experiment with these NFL stars. And the head of the organization gave this gave these NFL stars a challenge. They said, okay, this is what we want you to do. We have a trail back behind the property. It's to the woods. What we want you to do is we want you to go that trail and we want you to accomplish a mission. And the mission is we want you to go down the end of the trail, touch the pole, and then walk, come back. And they said, that's it? He said, yeah, that's it. That's the mission. That's the number one priority. That's what you need to be focused on. So they're all right. They're all going home. So they go off. And they say, oh, wait just a minute. Now, on this trail, you have to be aware of there could possibly be wild boars and snakes that will come across the trail. And they, stars are like, okay. And they... And then they still like, okay, we're still going to do this. That's not going to, you know, that's not going to scare us. We're going to complete this mission. So they get started. They're going on the trail. They're walking. They're going. And they're going to complete that mission because that's the number one priority is to touch that pole. But along the way, they come past this bush. And all of a sudden, what they did not know is that in this bush was one of the workers of this organization. And he was in the bush. And all of a sudden, he went... And he shook the bush. And it scared the living daylights out of the NFL as stars. And these big rough and tough men took right off in the other direction. And they got back to the they got back to the building and I said, Oh, so did you complete the mission? Did you touch the pole? 
And they said, no. He goes, no. Why not? He said, well, we just, you know, we, we got scared. Got scared. So the number one priority was missed because they allowed the distractions of that trail, of that path, to get the best of them. See, we as Christians live in a world today where we are faced with all sorts of distractions. And a lot of times, especially as humans, we allow these distractions to, to take over our lives. More specifically, we, we live in a world where worries and doubts take over our lives. That we worry about so many things. And that as humanity, we spend more time worrying about stuff instead of relinquishing it over to someone who has absolute power and authority. We do not want to give up or don't know how to give up these worries and doubts. See, humanity worries about so many things instead of trusting in God. That's where a lot of the problems come in. As humans, we naturally have this selfish tendency to take control of everything. But as Christians, we are called to turn our lives over to God. See, a lot of the worries that we have to deal with in our life is, for example, having clothes to wear. What will we eat? And having something to drink, as the scripture mentioned this morning. We also worry about financial needs. Marriage problems. Car issues. We have all these worries that, that constantly take up our time. And we don't want to really, we don't want to relinquish them. We don't give them to God. We don't trust God enough to take care of it. See, the issue that we find ourselves in is when we don't make God the number one priority in our lives and don't turn our worries over to Him, is that we will get more stressed out, we'll get more worried, and then anxiety is going to set in. You're going to have high blood pressure, I guarantee you that. And your problem is not going to go away or it's going to get bigger. We need to understand something this morning, brothers and sisters, that if we seek to let God reign in our lives, to allow God to be the number one priority, that everything starts with Him and everything comes after Him, we will have nothing to worry about. Because see, God has promised to, to provide not some, not a majority, but all of our needs. That when we give ourselves to God, He's going to take care of us. We will not have to want for anything ever again if we relinquish ourselves to God. And this means we're not going to have to worry about the next time we're going to eat. The clothes that we're going to wear. If we're going to have enough money to survive the week. If we're going to have shelter. All the needs, not wants, but needs that are for us, that are required for us to live in this world. If you dedicate your life to God and allow Him to control, take control of your life, He will supply those needs that you, that you are required to have. Don't worry about them. Don't be bogged down by them. Because see, God will assume full responsibility for all of those who yield their lives to Him. You trust Him, you have all your faith in Him, He's got your back. He's got you in the palm of His hand. There's no better place than to be in the palm of God Almighty. We as Christians are called to make God the number one, not second, not third, but number one priority in our lives. Because see, when we make Him number one, everything falls into place after that. Everything falls into place. Making God the number one priority in our lives involves us seeking above all God's kingdom and His righteousness. See, this means that as followers of Jesus Christ, we must seek earnestly to have the rule and power of God demonstrated in our individual lives and in the life of the church. With our marriages, our everyday lives, and lives of our children, we must put God first, and especially put God first in the church. 
that God is in charge, not no one else. We must make God the number one priority. This also means we need to put God in the center of everything. Everything that you do in your life, all the especially major decisions in your life should have God in the center of it. Because let me tell you something. You, a lot of us can testify to the fact that if we go even one day without putting God in the center of the day, without giving God acknowledgement and making God a priority, our day is going to be really, really junky. It's going to stink. It's going to be so bad that we're not going to even want to get up for the next day because we're feeling it's going to be a bad day. When you don't have God first, when you don't put Him first and you don't put Him in the center, it's like He doesn't exist. Your day is not going to go as smooth as it would have if you had Him as your first priority. In addition, through the Holy Spirit, we must seek to obey the commands of Christ. Possess Christ's righteousness and remain separated, not conformed, but separated from the world. And show Christ's love toward everyone. All of those things... Loving one another, being separated from the world, and following the righteousness of Christ and obeying His commands, that comes out of the verse. All of it extends from it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All of those things, being a Christian, extends off of that verse. Everything will work out for the best when you do make God the number one the head honcho. The very first thing in your life. So my brothers and sisters, do not worry. Don't fret about what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. Don't worry about what people are going to do to you or what they have done to you. Don't worry about not having enough money to pay your bills. Don't worry about all of that. Because see, this is the thing that you can cling to. If you put God first in your life, He will supply all your needs. He will direct your path. In other words, He will guide your life in the right direction. And all the things, all the wonderful and glorious things that He has promised shall be added unto you forever and ever. Amen.